We are live. This is the market update. I'm your host, Bill Noble. Bank failures, crypto mooning, stocks down, interest rates down, bank stocks down. Biden, you telling you everything is okay. Do you believe it all? What's relevant? What's not? I will tell you. If you need a roadmap in crypto, subscribe to this channel. Turn on alerts so you know when we're going live. And if you like the content, hit the thumbs up. Okay, here's the good news. The good news is I started in this market back as an 18-year-old intern in 1991. So I have seen a few debacles in my day. We'll talk about the history of the, the debacles I've been in, some trading lessons. I may even go through some personal financial tips. For example, one of the things that I did was say, okay, if there's going to be a problem with the banking system, obviously you want to have crypto. Obviously you want to have gold, but you want to have more than one form of gold. You might be able to tell what that is based on my backdrop. But I actually did something very ironic in that I paid off some credit card debt. I was like, hey, you know, if my money is going to disappear, I might as well make my credit history as good as I can and make sure I can pay off my debts. Also making sure that you have things like grocery store gift cards, which you can buy with, you know, with a debit card. In other words, you know, it's like electronic food as well as having cash on hand for rent and mortgage payments. So that's personal finances. Now we're going to talk trading in a debacle. So we've been saying all year, I've been saying all year that it's not a dip, it's not a bull market unless you can buy a dip and make money. And I don't know if crypto could have looked worse on Friday, right? The bank failures were being blamed on crypto. USDC depegged over the weekend. Influencers on Twitter were like, I want my mommy to hold me, right? It was, it was dark. And of course, right at a big fib number, which we'll go into, the market turns around and goes straight up. Okay. Now with that said, selling into despair and buying into euphoria did not work in 2008. Frequently the market would collapse and then people would hedge and then all those shorts would get stopped out. People would buy thinking it was all over and everything was perfect, celebrating relative outperformance and whatever was doing well at the time, only to see that thing turn around and either dip hard or get totally hammered. Okay. So the other trading lesson is for people who do move in and out is that your position size in these environments needs to be way smaller than it normally is. Like if you have a view that crypto is going up, right? And you decide to get long, you got to get long a smaller portion of what you would normally do because the market may move around five and 10% at a time, as you can see today. All right. That's the preliminary lecture. Let's get to who's on the stream. Welcome everybody. Brick Dreams is here. He's back. Spin. Crypto AI. Welcome. Right. Warrior Mama, GF, Daniel, Amy, welcome. Rudy is here. X E X A USA. Welcome. Ahmed, Zach, Carlos, Crypto to Cass, Driftless, welcome. Tito, Reverend Flashback, Aiken with the Notorious Love. Kim, Mr. Moby Dick, Mr. Finland, Sebas, Crypto Crazy. JP Stanley, double AM, Jay Sun, Grandpa Rock, straight out of the UK. And Duilo checking in. Shizzy DeFi, I bought a dip and made money. Back to the dip. One of the things we discussed about on previous market updates was GAN work around a solar, a rare solar eclipse that will occur in April. So from 1816 to 1987, there's only been a handful of these occurrences. Now I've been sitting on this work and talking about it incessantly. There were a lot of things in there like dollar declines, currency crises, issues with commodities and gold, 
blow-ups from tightening cycles, and multiple financial panics. I saw it. They were like, literally, half of the occurrences resulted in a financial panic, and other occurrences resulted in huge moves, either in oil, commodities, bonds, or stocks. And as a lesson to you and to everybody, I was sitting on the research talking about financial panics, dollar declines, but I could never have imagined what's happening right now, even though I had the research that it was going to be a panic. So there's, there's a very, very fine line between knowing what's happening and then being able to execute on it. It's just like a general lesson of trading. Now that said, we are in a financial panic. Financial panics are not over in a day, a week, or even a month. So let's go. We're going to go to PowerPoint, and then we're going to go to the news. We're going to go to PowerPoint, and then we're going to go to the news. Okay, not investment advice. Do your taxes, pro Bitcoin solutions, slash noble, link below. Okay, $149 for an overall report and a CSV file to hand to your accountant. Okay, and $20 per chain. So for every coin you do, they charge you $20 to figure out what your capital gains and losses are versus $40. Here's something really ironic. And I'm glad I paid my taxes early. Pay your taxes because you are better off paying your taxes and getting a check in the box with the government than you are if there's a systemic bank failure or God forbid Putin hacks the banking system while we're down on our knees. I know that sounds ridiculous, but if you got bills to pay, pay them. You got taxes to do, talk to these guys, link below, support the channel. Now, Joe Biden says, Everything is fine. Don't worry. The banking system is safe. Let me ask you this. For long-time market update readers, listeners, you don't need to hear this, but the new people do. When they are telling you that everything is all right, it's not. Do you know how many times in 2022 you heard from Celsius, Voyager, SBF? Don't worry. Everything's fine. Stay the course, lads. The biggest Sound of alarm was this, was this, right? Telling you everything it's fine. If they're telling you that, it's not. Companies tied directly to the SVB crash. Okay, so this is Silicon Valley Bank. As a brief overview, Silicon Valley Bank was a highly speculative institution. They, on one hand, had a lot of rich private clients because it was very, it was like a status symbol to bank there. But a lot of what they would do is loan money to hot tech companies and hope to get paid back when the tech companies IPO. So they were a source of liquidity for startups, which is good, but obviously no startups are going public in this environment. Also Silicon Valley bank, pretty much like any bank doesn't offer you anything for the money that you keep in there. So there's no incentive to keep money in the bank. So, you know, they pay you nothing, which is why they were okay when they went out and bought bonds, right? So they'll pay you nothing and they go buy government bonds that yield, I don't know, two, three, 4%. Well, small problem with that is that, you know, when you buy a bond that has a 2% yield, yeah, eventually you get your money back from the government. But if rates go to 4%, rates up, bond prices down, you have these huge, unrealized losses on your books, right? So when a tweet goes out that says Silicon Valley Bank is in trouble, literally everybody goes to get their money out all at once. They don't have enough money to pay you. Their assets are tied up in securities that they have losses in. They could sell them, but they couldn't sell them in time. So this is like the Twitter files part two. It's like all that's all that needs to happen in this environment is for somebody to get on Twitter and say, uh oh, some bank is gonna fail. Everybody gets on their phone in the, you know, in the 30s when he's when this happened last time, he used to have to go physically get in line, which ironically I did this weekend. 
Okay. All you got to do is get on your phone and transfer money from one place to the other. Everybody hits the transfer button and all of a sudden Silicon Valley bank is insolvent. And this is what's happening across the system. It's pretty much happening to every small regional bank. Okay. Now, did you notice that the number three bank on here is TikTok? Interesting that all these banks that are failing, uh, there's Coinbase and TikTok. Huh. Fascinating. Banks failing that the government doesn't like. Hmm. I wonder. Okay. You got to think about who's failing here and why. This could be a setup to wipe out regional banks. Because again, remember what Biden said. If you're insolvent, oh, don't worry. We'll take care of your depositors. We'll make sure everybody gets paid. But you're out of business. Okay. So if they're out of business, who's in business? I don't know. feels like a push towards a nationalized banking system where everything is run by CBDCs, which explains the bid in crypto. People are like, oh my God, I'm done with this. Not only do rich people got to get cash out of whatever it is that they're in and pile into Bitcoin, because even a 30% loss on Bitcoin is better than not getting any money back at all. So this is very suspicious what's happening and there's probably more shoes to drop. Now, on one hand, it's simple. Everyone wants their money out of a bank all at once and it's not there. So banks fail. That's part one. Part two is that the Fed comes in and says, basically, we'll print money to make everything okay. All right. Thank you. So they print money to make everything okay, which means interest rates are done going up, which is what I've been telling you, telling you, telling you, telling you that they're going to hike rates until they break something, which they did. They broke the whole system, the whole banking system, and now they have to back off. Largest drop in two-year note yields today since 87. Okay. So with that said, what's the next problem? Commercial real estate may be the next shoe to drop. Here's a list of regional banks with the worst balance sheet exposure to commercial real estate. So here's this huge long list of regional banks and commercial real estate was blowing up before all this happened. So even though the Fed has printed money and said everything is going to be okay, and you consider the eclipse research about panics, people could still panic. And if Joe Biden is telling you not to panic, that actually made me panic. I'm like, all right, all right. You know, got cash, got Bitcoin, got everything. Six months, you know, three months, food, and water, cool. And Biden comes on the air. I thought he was going to blame crypto, which would have been the dip of a lifetime. Instead, he told you everything is all right, which is a curse. Now, the next trade after commercial real estate will be the integrity of the U.S. government. USA sovereign credit risk, one-year commercial default swaps. This line, when it goes up, basically means the likelihood that the United States will default on its debt. Okay? So no likelihood of defaulting on the debt when we're printing money. And then you have a debt ceiling crisis, a USA downgrade in 2011, and the great financial crisis, otherwise known as Lehman. Okay, risk of a U.S. government debt default is higher than it's ever been. The bank that you have to worry about failing is the Fed. Seriously. And this is why the price of gold could skyrocket beyond any imagination, which could also put pressure on big banks. Hopefully, I can get to discuss more about that later or in future market updates. The problem is not what happens to Silicon Valley Bank. The problem is what happens to the big banks and the central banks themselves. Now, let's talk about the dollar. I am time stamped for all of this year going, you know what? I hate the dollar. And the dollar went to 106. Yippee. Yours. Dollar makes a new high. Stochastics don't follow. Boom. Down this thing goes. Down this thing goes. The U.S. dollar is finished. Either the Fed has to print the U.S. dollar to save the entire system after it spent the last six months breaking it. And of course, you know, the Fed is probably okay with that. You know, I have a really, really smart person who says the Fed would always prefer to print money 
versus Titan. They would always prefer that. Now, will inflation let them? I don't know. Those numbers are tomorrow. I don't care what happens. The dollar is done because the Fed cannot hike rates anymore. If interest rates has to go up, they have to let long-term interest rates go up. But the dollar is done, which means the dawn of crypto and gold is here. The question is managing the volatility. Okay, again, gold goes up, hits the 38% retracement, runs stops, big Williams oscillator signal, boom. This is a multi-year uptrend starting in gold. Naturally, I work for Emerging Asset Group where we have a micro cap way to play gold in GLDN, which is also going to be a native token to buy water and will be connected to an on-chain business so that if you want to buy diamonds, gold bullion, or jewelry, you can do so by coming, by staying on chain. It's called Block 47. So I own GLDN. I own the water token Bark, and I'm tracking this. And honestly, this is what we were made for. Okay. GDX, gold stocks, new low in price, higher low in stochastics. Gold mining stocks haven't even returned to their 2022 high. Junior gold mining stocks, highly speculative versions of, of gold stocks. Could go from 35 to 45. Where do you think gold and Bitcoin could potentially be if that happens? Could be incredible. Here is GLDN, again, the token I own. This is what it looked like on Friday. I was talking about the bottom Bollinger Band being support, right? Historically, even though it's been a downtrend and everybody's been given up, right? Every time it goes below the bottom Bollinger Band, it's wound up going back up again. Then all of a sudden, boom, GLDN is higher, back up near the top Bollinger Band. Now, my original thesis on GLDN was very simple. You're going to be able to use it to buy water. It'll be the native token of a DEX that will be built or is being built. And it's a way to play the price of gold outside the legacy system. You get a reward in packs, like an auto staking for doing this. I mean, what's the market cap on this project? Six, seven million? You, if, if the case to be outside the legacy system has not been made, then I cannot help anybody. Again, I own the token. Three big astrological events that we want to pay attention to. First one was Saturn entering Pisces. Basically, that meant you got to get real about a lot of things. Who knew it meant the U.S. government was going to have to get real about the problems with the banking system? I thought it was like, you're going to have to get real about your altcoins versus Bitcoin. Full moon, full moons in March and years ending in three. Always a huge problem. Interest rates, currency devaluations, wars, government shutdowns. And then there's the eclipse on April 20th. That eclipse has been associated with financial panics. Most of them related to tightening all involving big trends in commodities. Okay, that is the market update. So let's sum up each part of the show. Okay, a financial panic is on and is not over. Just a question of where it spills over. It's most likely going to spill over next into the big banks, creating a big rally in precious metals and crypto. The trick will be in crypto to get the next vicious dip. So let's talk about that. Okay. So <clears throat> Jim Cramer, two days ago, tweets, JP Morgan is a fortress. Okay. I write with QE on again. The next question about banks is this. If there's a default on delivery of physical gold, which institutions would be exposed? <clears throat> I actually asked chat GBT about this. They said all the banks that would be attached to the clearinghouse of the COMEX. So in the event that everybody wants physical gold, you know that there's going to be a problem with the banking system. That process could feed on itself. Okay. So if you're wondering why is crypto up today, it's because there's a problem with the system. 
Okay, here's the chart of the yield on the U.S. government two-year note. As oh, sure. Sure. Fox, oh, not sharing the screen. Here is the chart of the U.S. two-year note as the yields collapse, as everyone absolutely panics and buys U.S. two-year note government bonds. This is the largest drop since the 87 crash. And just so you can see the overall chart, like the monthly chart, notice how it stopped right up here at the 26, 2006, 2007 high, right before the precipitous drop on the great financial crisis. Silicon Valley bank collapse forces rethink on interest rates and hits bank stocks. Joe Biden said today that if we have to save your bank, your stockholders and your bondholders are absolutely wiped out. And I guess the government owns the bank. So bank stocks are collapsing. So this is not over. It's not like 2008 in the sense that the big banks have toxic assets on their balance sheet. Although, you know, they could have commercial real estate problems. Now they're just afraid of the government. So people are trying to pull cash out of regional banks. And portfolio managers are going, oh my God, I can't justify being long these bank stocks and they're selling. Fed's new backstop shields banks from $300 billion in losses. Huh? What's $300 billion between friends? Nothing. The Fed's just going to print. They're just going to print. Now, if the inflation number comes out tomorrow and inflation is still hot, the Fed's not going to do anything about that. They can't. They can't hike rates or they'll blow up the system. Now, they may have to let long-term interest rates rise, keeping in mind the Federal Reserve does not have control over long-term interest rates. They have control over the overnight lending rate between banks and the yield curve and the Mr. Market builds out, you know, what is the yield on the two, you know, the five, you know, the 30-year bond, which helps determine the 30-year mortgage rate. Okay. Now, you're getting a picture here where this is like, oh, my God, you know, People got to get their money out of banks. You know, bank stocks are collapsing. Everything that these Bitcoin maximals have always said. Somebody said in a Twitter space this morning that was very, very accurate. Bitcoin is not a hedge against inflation. Bitcoin is a hedge against a systemic debacle. Okay. In 2022, Jim Cramer says you can make a lot of money with Signature Bank, which failed today. Okay. Which, according to a tweet, which I believe I retweeted, which is totally unbelievable. And this segues into our crypto section. Look at this. Dear God, Barney Frank openly admits that Signature was arbitrarily shuttered despite no insolvency because regulators wanted to kill off the last major pro-crypto bank. Colossal scandal. For his, for his part, Frank, who helped draft the landmark Dodd-Frank Act after the 2008 financial crisis, said that there was no real objective reason that Signature had to be seized. I think part of what happened was that regulators wanted to send a very strong anti-crypto message. We became the poster boy because there was no insolvency based on fundamentals. So the government is still attacking crypto, we just don't know it. So that brings us to what's going on on crypto charts, which I want to go to next. Okay. By the way, to hear the recording of this Twitter space, it's on my Twitter and it's at zero X gold retriever. I recommend, I, I recommend tuning into this because it's not just me talking. Okay. GAN work in ETH. So there was an eight by one GAN line that was at 1300. 1380, I was thinking 1300, but this line popped in there. If 1575 acts as support in ETH, the next level is 1700. Now, the next big inflection date is March 16th for crypto. I'm guessing that if there's going to be a dip in crypto or some sort of climactic event, like the government blames us, or some sort of massive moonshot, March 16th will be the area or the date that it happens. My guess is, is that the bottom in crypto is probably in and that 
you know, it's time for the whole thing to just smoke higher. The only question is how nasty is the last dip? How nasty? This is also typical during debacles. Silicon Valley Bank, UK armed, acquired by Hong Kong Shanghai Bank for one pound. Right. In other words, trading is predatory. It is. And the vultures out there will push banks to insolvency and then scoop up the pieces. Biden vows new bank rules after SVB collapse cites Trump rollback. So everything is Donald Trump's fault. In this case, that may be true if they changed capital requirements, but the fact that they're still talking about that seems highly unusual to me. Okay. One thing I think is interesting is Silicon Valley bank customers can fully access funds after the FDIC just creates a whole new bridge bank. They're like, look, you can get your money back if you just come on into our government bank. Can you believe it? Okay. Now we have to do all this with live TA. Like in 2008, I used to do chart reports and the chart reports would hit people's email. It'd be good for 10 minutes and I have to do another chart report. So it's all got to be done with live TA. Okay. Let's start with equities. So we have an 89 minute chart of stocks. QE is back on again. There's only one thing that kind of bothers me about stocks. Okay. I was kind of looking for support around 3820. It went down there. It's hard to interpret what this new spike through meant, but equities could be done going lower. In other words, this morning or last night, I would have told you that people were going to have to bank. We're going to have to sell stocks in the morning to raise capital. Now it feels like everyone is panicking and going in and buying securities and crypto because it's so much better to take your money and buy S and P. So even if you buy S and P or you buy a mutual fund, right? Your securities will be in a triple A rated clearinghouse. So when you buy through a bank or broker dealer like Schwab, your securities are not held by Schwab. They're held by a clearinghouse that's triple A rated. And if your securities are lost in some sort of calamity, they're insured by something called the SIPC. Now, what that means is it feels like people are panic buying everything except bank stocks. Okay. And I think that is also what is driving crypto. Okay. So let's go to crypto. Let's look at the DeMarc work. So this is a 90 minute chart. Okay. I'm pretty sure on Friday, you can find me talking about this five and zero on the 90 minute chart, implying that this was like a long-term bottom being in, or at least long-term for this time horizon. Okay. This is a textbook, textbook DeMarc countdown where you have the first part of a trend as one through nine, that's called setup. And then the red numbers are going to count all the way to 13. So you could have one or two more days of this where crypto just absolutely rips up, just rips up. Look at Bitcoin on the daily chart, right? We talked about this, these nine bottoms. So to, to clarify. These things called nine bottoms and 13 bottoms and tops come from Tom DeMarc's analysis. He was a, he was the original quant TA. So when you see a one, that means a set of conditions was present, right? The high was higher than the high two days ago. And each day that condition is present. The bar gets a number. So when you get to the nine, all right, that's either the end of a trend inside of a range or the end of a correction, or it's the first part of a larger trend. Okay. 
Now, on that 90 minute chart, we saw one through nine, pause, and then go. Okay, this, wow, I mean, this is one through nine, and then just go. Right. So theoretically, this could be five to six more days. Now, again, you got resistance at 25K. And if this is a financial panic, no one's going to care about the price of Bitcoin that they pay. No one's going to care. Okay. Now, a word, a word of advice. The concept of it's not a bull market until you can buy a dip and make money still holds true. So let's review what we were looking at on Friday. You know, I swear to God, I don't know if this could have been more difficult to do, especially with circle failing over the weekend or depegging. Bitcoin went right to the 62% retracement of its recent up move. It's not a bull market. I mean, you can buy a dip and make money. You bought the dip, you made money. It's a bull market. Okay. So that's perfect. All right. Now let's hope, let's hope that this is not A, B, C, that there isn't a final down leg before it goes higher. So if you missed this part of the move, I am not inclined to chase this part of the move, even if it winds up up 20% at the end of today. I'm not. I know that sounds crazy. And maybe that's not the right thing to tell you, but I'm not interested in chasing the market just because you may have missed it down here. Because if this thing comes back down again, it may come back down in such a violent fashion that it may make this look like kid stuff. It's happened before, right? The government is going to blame crypto for all these bank failures. Eventually it's going to spill over into commercial real estate. If you bought crypto, not investment advice, you know, you can take a little bit of profit and just leave it. I mean, if you got trade location, leave it. If you don't have a position and you're like, should I pay 24,000 for Bitcoin? If, if I FOMO into anything, it would be gold mainly because it's just not up that much. Now, one of the reasons to not fall, we're going to go to ETH now. One of the reasons why this can go higher is that, you know, People are FOMOing in. One of the reasons to not join them is because if there is a problem inside hedge funds, which there will be with that bond market move, hedge funds will get liquidated. Somebody in the trading world is going to blow up based on these moves. You cannot have that kind of movement and have somebody not literally blow up. So hedge funds are the next round of liquidations here. It's a little bit different than 2008, right? The commercial real estate exposure with the little guys and the exposure to a default on gold delivery and an exposure to insolvent hedge funds is the threat against the big guy. So if hedge funds might be insolvent, this is a four hour chart of Ethereum. There's resistance up here at 1700 and we're on a seven. You could go to a nine. So you could have like eight more hours. You could have this glorious up move to complete the God candle for today. And then people may have to start liquidating. Right now, it looks like they're liquidating shorts. People may have to start liquidating longs to raise capital because in hedge funds, the way it works is if they lose money in one product, their risk management models tell them to liquidate everything, even if that's what's working. So while I'm super bullish crypto and I have been like, People are too bearish down at the bottom, praying that there wasn't going to be any type of like ugly Elliott wave new low. You don't have to FOMO in right now because again, the same theory applies from the other day. It's not a bull market unless you can buy a dip and make money. You could buy a dip and make money here. Awesome. There should be some kind of a dip. Maybe it breaks out first, but I would rather, I would rather save any ammo left for a dip in the middle of March because that could be something with that. Cause remember we got inflation and we got a fed meeting coming out once upon a time in 2007, in December of 2007, Alan Greenspan cut interest rates more than expected kind of out of nowhere. 
Normally, interest rate cuts are good for markets. And we all looked at each other and said, oh, my God, holy, something's wrong. Like, they know, and they just told us. So when Joe Biden stepped up to the plate and said, everything is all right, everything isn't. This is net bullish crypto. I just, I just want you to be able to buy dips rather than FOMO in on 10% updates. That's all. Okay. And I do think transactional currencies and certain altcoins are going to be good. We're going to look at that in a minute. Let's go to an ETH daily chart. Okay. Again, the nine bottom is here. Okay. There's a lot of congestion at this 17, 1800 level. I do think they are going to run all the stops up here. They are going to do it. Right. And if you look at this to mark work, I mean, it went one through nine on the way down and it could go one through nine on the way up. So I'm super bullish crypto. I just want you to be there to be able to buy that dip in the middle of the month. I know I'm kind of zigging and zagging. That's if you're like saying, okay, what do these bank failures mean? What's the next shoe to drop? Big banks, commercial real estate, gold defaults, hedge funds. How can I use that to help Greg crypto? Okay. And how can I not get killed? If everybody turns around and gets smoked on the downside, because remember, in these big crashes, do not buy euphoria and do not sell despair. Everybody sold despair, wiped out. Everybody will probably buy euphoria at ETH in 1800. Don't do it. Okay. Language trainer, GLDN, Bark, Bitcoin, ETH, AVAX, XRP, Matic, Near, Polkadot. All, all, all coins. I can make a case for, okay. Megan says intelligent and manipulative white collar criminals will continue to run our financial system into the ground. They know exactly what they're doing. They benefit and little people pay the consequences. Yeah. They're either trying to destroy crypto by destroying crypto banks, or they're trying to nationalize the banking system. Okay. Or. They're just taking advantage of idiotic risk management on the part of small banks to come in and take things over. In other words, you know, maybe it wasn't like, we're going to take over the world like some cartoon bad guy, but they may be sitting around going, oh, look, men behaving badly, men behaving badly, idiots at Wall Street. Oh, great. More of an excuse to come in and do what we want to do, which is put everybody on CBDCs which is why the market is like, oh my God, I, I got to buy crypto. I absolutely got to buy crypto. M Mr. Moby Dick picked up ETH yesterday. Marco is here, better late than never. You're never too late. You're not too early. You're right on time. You're right on time. Okay, greetings from Norway. Thank you. Welcome. Robin is here. Wayne. Mind rest. Okay. Mind rest says, I don't know. I'm kind of afraid of feeling FOMO, to be honest. Okay. Wayne says, if not now, when 50 K. All right. Well, if it's going to go to 50 K, you would want to see some kind of breakout and then a retest, right? If you start to see bull market behavior, right? You want to see, I mean, this looks like a perfect trend. Cause again, here's ETH, right? ETH did 50% of its overall move off the lows. And as we've been talking about, sixty-two percent to the number, right? So this could be one, two, three, four, five. Let's look at it on Trading View. Hey, ETH makes a big new high. That's usually a sign a three wave is over. Okay, you got the divergence. They wipe everyone out. Boom. Right. You probably got two or three more up days of just straight up, up only in ETH. If you want to jump on that, you can jump on that. Remember, you got Fed meetings. Fed comes out and says, there's a problem. Crypto may lurch up initially, 
The crypto is going to be subject to any liquidation pressure inside hedge funds. Just making you aware. I know this feels like crypto's big moment and it probably is, but you've never, never done well in crashes like this, celebrating relative outperformance of anything. So it's up talking about buying a dip, talking about people were too bearish, looking for a major low in equity some point this month. Just don't doubt what can happen just because Joe Biden says it's over. It's not over. It's not. And I wish I could tell you exactly what I think it is. I'm doing the best I can. But the thing that about this that is so weird is that it's very hard to figure that out. It's, it's hard. Like if I, I came out and said, hey, there's going to be a financial panic and that's going to be bullish for crypto. Would you have believed me? XRP. Okay. So speaking of, you know, it's my moment in time. You know, here's XRP on a four hour chart. So this was the relative outperformance of S XRP as the SEC was embarrassed in court. Here was, of course, the flush of all that out. Now XRP is sitting on support around 3650. One thing I find very interesting about XRP, okay? Is that there's a very interesting wave count that the primary move up was from 32 cents to 43 cents. And that this correction, even though it's hard to see on the chart was a B C. So, I mean, if there was ever a day where somebody would say, I need a parallel, I need a parallel banking system, or I need a parallel way to move money around. If you ask me, Gold and XRP should be up a lot more than they are. I mean, honestly, I mean, I know everyone's flying into Bitcoin and Ethereum trying to, you know, get out of banks, but I mean, sometimes the first trade is not the right trade. I mean, I'm not saying buying Bitcoin and Ethereum isn't right, but I'm like, wait a minute, this should be XRP to the moon. They, the government's going to lose the case. They're going to lose the case. Okay, let's look at the sequential work on XRP. Like I rarely discuss XRP. I've been on the air for like three years and I haven't discussed it. I started discussing it. You got a 13 bottom on a daily chart. That was March 10th. Then you got this gigantic hammer candlestick. Then you got another candlestick where they go down and they come all the way back. I mean, if this is not the case for XRP, I don't know what is. And I know you're going to think this is a laugh or two. But what about Litecoin? You know, what, what about the transactional currencies in this space? So this is Litecoin weekly. Okay. There's support around 75. Okay. There was support at 67. I mean, I'm just kind of wondering if people have to start paying for things in crypto over the next six months. I mean, is this stuff worth a look if you're like building a portfolio of altcoins, right? Going back to like, hey, say like the future of money. Okay, just to look at an alt, look at an altcoin. Okay, just so you know, after this, we're going to be headed over to a major show on debate crypto. All right. So everybody from the show is going to get transferred over there. So there'll be more good information on that side. Avalanche, you know, as everyone was like mercilessly selling this thing, even below our targets near 14, these guys have a partnership with Amazon. If we need a new banking system, we need a new payment system. We need a new internet too. Now that said, this stuff could get absolutely hammered in the middle of the month. So you may get one of these things where it goes up and then it comes back down again. So, I mean, you know, some of these old coins that haven't performed as well, you know, maybe you can grab them up four or 5%. I wouldn't buy any God candles because you may still get dips. But the point is everybody was all down on crypto. Now that's, that hasn't worked. The government's attacked crypto before. They may try one more time.
but they threw the kitchen sink at crypto and have not been able to kill it. They have not been able to kill it. Okay, Megan says, anyone have any tips on how to buy crypto with cash? Yeah, I think your Bitcoin ATM machine, right? I mean, they're going to charge you a premium, right? But a, a Bitcoin ATM machine will, will give you crypto with cash. And you can see people lined up at these things because, you know, the sooner you get there, the better. Like, for example, I was too embarrassed to call some friends of mine on Saturday when I went to get cash, food, water, and crypto and tell people that something bad was going to happen because, you know, I didn't think that they would believe me. They weren't going to believe me. There's something out there and it ain't no man, right? The eclipse research. Driftless is long. LTC. Okay. XNO is a good transaction payment. Okay. So Aiken says, if we are in a liquidity crisis that could lead to a major regional bank insolvency, why pay off your credit card and your mortgage debt? Okay. Well, here's the thing. Some stuff I paid off, some stuff I left. Basically, what I did was I said, all right, I don't want my credit rating to suffer because whoever these people are, they're going to want their money no matter what. Like no, no credit card company is going to say, oh, well, you know, I'm late on my bills because I was a depositor at Silicon Valley Bank. I'm not. But I decided to pay some of my bills, right? Because I'm better off having the bills paid and having a favorable credit rating than I am being late on a whole bunch of stuff because of a calamity. Now you're right. There, there is one thing that I'm leaving that I'm just like, well, you know what? If this goes down, it goes down. So in a crisis, you don't know what the perfect strategy is. You don't, you don't. All right. I want to end off by looking at S and P futures. Okay. I also think you can get crypto inside things like PayPal, although I'm not sure who PayPal's bank is. Okay. <laughs> That's a big question. Who is PayPal's bank? Okay. So here's S and P futures, hidden pivot analysis. Okay. Amazing, amazing that 3840 came in as the low. A lot of times with this type of analysis, you now sometimes you get lucky and you can draw it beforehand. But the fact that I can draw that is really interesting because it basically gave you the low to the tick. Now, let me say one final word before we head over to the other show. I'm in favor of buying dips. I'm not in favor of FOMOing. Dips may be small, dips may be big. I will help you figure that out. I think the dawn of crypto is here and I think people got way too bearish. I know they were bearish on, too bearish on US stocks and crypto took every punch that it could. If you hung in there, you should be proud of yourself. I am proud of you and I appreciate your viewership. Stay with the market update, stay with the Gold Retriever Telegram group, stay with the Gold Retriever Twitter spaces, which are on Mondays and Thursdays, All right? So that's the market update for today. We're going to head over to Debate Crypto.